Hey guys, I'm Simon. And I'm Ariel. Uh, we're out here uh, with Adventure Israel. Uh, we're going to show you guys how to make a bow and drill, uh, a slightly modified bow and drill. Uh, a normal bow and drill is consistent consists of you know the bow, the spindle, and the base. Uh, but what we're going to do, since we're going to make it a two-person bow and drill, uh, we're going to get rid of the actual bow and just keep the cord. And uh, we'll show you guys what we mean soon. So basically it's the same idea and the same materials that are needed. We need a base, we need a spindle, we need a, we need a handle, and we need a rope to, uh, to get the spindle moving. Alright guys, so the materials that we need for the bow drill, uh, we need a very dry wood, something that doesn't have too much resin. Uh, out here in Israel we have uh, willow, which is a great tree. Um, we have a couple other trees. What, what other trees do we have for... Uh... We got hardoof, which grows everywhere. People plant it as a lawn plant, a lawn bush. This is actually a hardoof spindle. Works fabulously. In fact, I've used it, but there's one major problem. Smoke inhaled from hardoof is actually lethal, could be lethal, depending on how much you inhale. So Toxic. don't use this. Now, we'll get a shot of hardoof later on for the video, but this is the branch. It's a lighter color than the willow. It's a lighter color than most trees or bushes. Do not use hardoof, but it works well in a dire strait. You could use it, just keep your face away from the smoke. Uh, we also have avocado and mango wood works well. Any wood that does not have resin works. If you have a water-based tree, like willow, which usually grows by water, water, then that's great. When you use pine or other resin-based, like almond or olive, you end up getting a polished tip, which prevents friction. So you need something that's water-based that does not gloss over. Right. Now, just keep in mind that even, even the willow and even all these uh, other sorts of wood, uh, they need to be completely dry. You can't just cut them off the li you know, a limb off the tree and start working with it. It's, it's, it's too green, it's too wet. So you want to find the piece that's been on the floor, lying around, uh, not rotten. We got us a nice specimen of, uh, of willow here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first make the base. And in the base we're going to create our notch. And also we need to make our slice of the pie cut, one -sixth. which uh, one-sixth of the pie, which is going to be where the coal starts to form, okay? So what we're first going to do is we're going to baton, we're going to split this piece of wood here. Right, while Shimon's got the batoning going down, I'm going to show you what kind of rope we're using. We have two choices out with us today. This is a braided polyester, like navy line, and we also have just simple twisted polyester. I've used both of these. It's easy to find in any hardware store. Um, obviously, if you're in a survival situation, you can use your shoelaces, you can use anything. In fact, we've done this with uh, just braided palm cordage that we've made out from palm trees in the woods. So, we're gonna probably use this to start with. We've got plenty of grip. To give an example of a previous set we made. You see there's some lines sliced in a crisscross fa fashion over the entire spindle. That was just to increase friction, otherwise it starts to get a bit polished and the rope, is, the cordage starts to spin instead of catching the spindle, it actually just spins across it. These little, these little slices actually prevent the cordage from slipping along the spindle as you're trying to get it to move. Alright, so we have our two, we have our wood split in half. It's actually a very nice clean split. Uh, we don't actually need so much of the, like this is actually too, very long. Um, it's easier to but, but you know what, it's fine, it's going to be easier because um, this, the bottom base, because we're doing this for a two person, uh, will make great for having space for your feet to keep it from moving. So now the next step would be to make our spindle. Would be to grab a little bit narrower piece you, of wood. You want the same material, spindle and baseboard. Correct. Ideally it should be the same medium weight wood. Willow's fine for that. The handhold could really be anything. It could be a glass bottle if you have one, something that fits. We're just going to use a piece of willow cut from the same piece of wood earlier. But uh, ideally you have something harder than the spindle and baseboard. But the spindle and baseboard should be the same material. Okay, now this particular piece of wood has a lot of nuts and, uh, and stumps. Uh, we have to get rid of those so that there's no resistance on the rope, so that everything moves smoothly. So you just want to make sure you, just, you take them off. Stop taking off your foot. He's a young whippersnapper. He learns fast, I tell you. All right, so what yeah. we need to do is we need to now round off both ends of the of the spindle. 
We want the base board end, which is going to be going into our base with our notch, to be round to create more friction, and the top end to be tapered as pointy as possible to fit into the handhold where you want less friction. Okay, guys. So now that we have the the top, the, the base part of it rounded, it's it's square now. But as we apply friction, it'll it'll smoothen out, and we have the top part which is more narrow. Do we now. got our spindle done. We're gonna start with the baseboard now, just to get a notch. Okay. Okay, real simple. We're just gonna start in the center. We're doing center lengthwise and center widthwise. We're gonna create a small hole, just enough to get our spindle to sit in. For the first couple of spins, and then we'll do the rest of the drilling with the spindle itself. Hence the name Bowen Drill. We're actually gonna drill right through this it happens fast. Now another thing we can do to make it a little faster is to just grab a small piece of charcoal, tip it right into the to the hole, and then you just blow. For about seven hours, and then you should be all set. <laughs> and of course you, the forest is full of pieces of coal that are waiting to be used to make a bow and drill set. So you get your fire going. <laughs> Forest fire probably, going. Probably really bad. Where'd it go? All right, that's enough for now. We're gonna use this other baseboard. We do the same same thing for the handhold on top. Obviously, better not to cut right in towards your palm. The idea with the handhold is just a place for the spindle to nest. You don't want friction coming out of the handhold. All right, that's a good start for now. Basic idea, spindle sits in the baseboard, which we're going to get a bigger hole soon. Handhold goes on top, and we're, we got our friction fire ready to go. We don't need to make a bow like this. This would also work. Don't need this for now, because we're just going to use a length of rope and two people. Now, just so that when you when you put the, the spindle on the, hand, on, the, on the handhold, so that you have less friction, uh, one thing you can do is just Get it greasy, you know. Get yeah. some, get some, you know, even some some nose grease in there. Yeah, there's always you could some, you could use some, candle wax if some, you have. Some ear, ear wax. Ear wax works. You and, could use and, whatever oil on the side of your nose, back exactly. of your neck. Exactly, and and it's great because it causes less friction on the actual piece of wood, so it's more efficient down here, and there's less uh, taken over here. All right, and as and the opposite is true for the bottom. You want friction there, so don't get oil in there. You also don't want water in there. Some people think I'll put some water in there to loosen it up. Not a good idea. Water the same way when water evaporates, it cools down on your skin or on anything else. It does the same in the wood. So you actually create a situation where the wood swells up and the, as it evaporates, it cools down the baseboard, which we want the opposite. We want the baseboard to heat up so we get our coal. So we're going to start with just getting this to spin and drilling into the baseboard a bit. It's not straight. It's going to spin harder. It's going to get it. It's going to get it. Okay. Now you can do one spin, two spins, three spins around. I'm going to do three just to get the max amount of friction on a spindle, but because I have so many twists or spins around this spindle, I want to keep them layered properly. I'm going to keep, as I'm, as I'm getting this thing moving, I'm going to keep one hand higher up and the one hand lower down so they're not tangled. Okay, as you can see, for those who have done this before, we already have smoke. This system is so much faster than a one-person bow and drill so much easier and it's burning right through the baseboard which is good it's what we want now, as with a regular bow and drill once we have our notch cut you're gonna put pressure to get it started and once you get towards the end point once you build up a nice nest of dust then you want to add pressure to get all that extra friction in Hi right, guys, so we've burnt in our base hole, uh, and we've uh, while we were doing that, rounded that, that rounded off the, the bottom part of the spindle. So now what we're going to do is he's going to cut uh, a sixth of a pie into the, into the, into the, the hole of the base. You know, just, to the, just before the center of the hole we just drilled out, we're going to create that pie slice. That's going to be our notch for the coal. Okay, now uh, while we were doing it, we realized that there was some smoke coming up the top of the 
the handle, which meant that the top part of our spindle needed to be a little bit narrower. So I'm just going to correct that by, you know, shaving off a little bit more. Goodbye, my almost lover. Further? Goodbye, my hopeless friend. All right, guys. So while Perfect. he's while he's finishing up the 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 notch in the in the base, I'm just gonna make some feather sticks for a kindling. All right, folks. We're gonna get this spinning, going for the coal. We got our tinder at the bottom, ready to catch it, and you'll see how fast we get smoke with this two-person set. All right, we got smoke. A little bit of dust is coming in. What we do is we want to keep steady pressure until we get to the last stage. Once we get towards the end, all right, we're already filling up with dust fast in there. We're going to increase pressure. Not so much dust. We want to increase pressure, give us more friction, and just go all out like a mad man. Spin a little back, pop back. Trying to take it forward a little bit. There's really no rush on this. As it's sitting, it's just going to keep growing. All right, we're gonna tap out the coal. We've got a nice breeze behind us, which is perfect. We're gonna bring this beautiful ember. Right into, drop it right nicely. Right into our nest. Okay, and we're gonna let the wind do its job here. We can even wave it. Oh, look at that beautiful red ember. We're gonna have plenty of fire very shortly. Keep, keep the wind coming. Once it, once it catches the feather sticks, dude, we're in, we're in business. Awesome. And we got our fire, folks. Two-person bow and drill without the bow. Much faster than your standard system. If you're out by yourself, it's a great way to shave, haircut. <laughs> right, go for your eyelashes and eyebrows while you're at it. And Thanks for watching Adventure Israel. Come out and join us.